Hi, I'm Eric from New Rhyme Marine, and today we're going to be talking about wiring electric trim tabs on a boat. This uses a linear actuator with reversing polarity and a double pole, double throw rocker switch. We'll talk about what reversing polarity is, how it applies to trim tabs, and details about how to wire that switch. Now, what makes electric trim tabs work is a linear actuator driven by an electric motor. That electric motor spins one way or the other, depending on the polarity of its inputs. It has two input wires and not, one is not necessarily positive and one is not necessarily negative. They switch. That's what reversing polarity is. When it's in one direction, the actuator moves inward. When it's in the other direction, it moves outward. So we have our linear actuator and our DC power supply at 12 volts. These are the two leads coming from the linear actuator. Positive is red, negative is black. Now I'm going to apply these leads and you'll see that the motor spins making the actuator go in. Now I'm going to reverse polarity. I'm going to take the negative off and put the positive in that place. It goes the other direction. In a minute, we're going to show you how to do that with a double pole, double throw rocker switch. But first, let's talk about trim tabs. So what are trim tabs? The little metal things on your back of your boat, they're actuated by linear actuators, just like the one we're going to look at. And uh, the thing to remember, the rocker switches <clears throat> are doubly backwards. So the port switch goes to the starboard tab and the starboard switch goes to the port tab. Also, up on the switch makes the tab goes down, bow down, and down on the switch makes the bow come up. This is a double pole, double throw, momentary rocker switch with six terminals two inputs and two outputs per input, so four total. The schematic looks like this. And what we're gonna end up doing is putting positive into one input, negative into another, and then a series of jumpers that allows that to reverse polarity depending on the position of the switch when you press it. Now, like we've talked about, the switches we need are double pole, double throw. Those will, they'll have six contact terminals on them. And you can know the contact numbers by little imprints in the side of the switch, or sometimes they're on, on the back of the switch, or sometimes they're on the side of the switch like this. And we're gonna go through two different variants, and we carry both of these at New Wire Marine. One with that's an unlit switch that has no lights in it, and one that's a 10 terminal switch with lights in it. Okay, so here we have our two trim tab switches. Double pole, double throw, six terminals on each. And the jumper wiring is really pretty straightforward. What you do is crisscross on the back of the switches. From terminal three, six, one, sorry, three to four, and one to six. There's a crisscross. Now let me get some leads. We'll bring power into one side of the switch. This is positive, this is gonna be positive, and negative to the other side in terminal uh, five. Which are printed really smallly on the back of the switch. Hook these up to our power supply, and then out to the motor. And now these two terminals, if you can see them on the bottom, which we used, we've used a piggyback jumper for, uh, will go out to the motor. So for that, I'm going to use these, white on one and orange on the other. And I'll tell you what, it doesn't really matter which way because it is, it's, it's kind of hard to figure out which way the motors are going to go depending on the wiring coming from the, uh, you know, what, what, what wires you have coming from your motor. But it doesn't really matter. If, it, if you plug it in and, and it spins the, the wrong way, you just flip them, spin it the other way. Okay, so here's our linear actuator. I'm gonna arbitrarily choose that one, that one. And then when you press up, it goes one way, and press down, it goes the other way. If that was wrong, that's not the way you want it, but that's not the way it needs to be. Switch these reversing polarity, and now up goes out and down goes in. All right, let's go over the jumpers in detail. The crisscross jumper go from one down to six, and the second set from four down to three. Now the jumper I'm using here is a pre-built piggyback jumper because you're gonna have to make another connection into the bottom, which is out to the low. One, out to the electric motor, this you're reversing polarity to, out to. Now we need to bring power into the switch, positive into one side, and then negative into terminal two here, or it could have been five. Positive and negative on these don't really matter. Now these are the output leads. They go here and power comes into positive into one side, negative into the other side, out, right. 
So that was with an unlit switch with no lights in it. Now let's look at how to do it with a 10 terminal lit switch with two independent lights. Okay, so what I'm trying to demonstrate here is trim tab switches that will light up at night. And it's very common that use their nav lights for this. And so we use the 10 terminal switches we talked about. Now it's important to realize this is the other switch, the unlit switch with six terminals. The contact terminals, one, two, three, four, five, six, are all the same, but there's just two additional terminals, a positive and negative for each of the lights. And the fact that they have exterior, conne exterior connections for the positive is what makes them independent, which means the independent means they don't come on when the switches moves, they come on by an external circuit. And so that's what I'm gonna do now is wire an external circuit. But let me just demonstrate right quick how that happens. All the contact terminals are the same, but I'm just gonna really quickly put a negative onto terminal nine and a positive onto terminal 10, and you can just see the light lights up, giving a nice clear illumination at night. And the same for the top, we flip it over, same for the top, positive, negative, the top light lights up. And so it's just a series of jumpers that makes that happen when your nav lights turn on. So let me go get this connected and we'll come back. So I've got this nav light switch pre-wired. Uh, we've got another video on that, which we'll drop in the description. And the output of the nav lights would come here out of this double, this little piggyback. And I'm gonna start daisy chaining it to all the backlight terminals. I've got this one already pre-configured for reversing polarity, the crisscross jumpers, just like we talked about. So I'm gonna start going through here and adding uh, this to terminals, the bottom terminals, and then I'm gonna come back up across the top to the top terminals and uh, just follow this chain, connecting it. And this is where our pre-made jumpers really come in handy. Uh, these piggybacks are so great not to have to stack two terminals and, and the little piggybacks on them. The piggybacks are automatically built in. So if you wanted to continue this chain, then you would, you just put another one and keep going. But since this is the last one, I'm gonna end it here without uh, another jumper. Now, same deal for the negatives. This one gets a little tricky where I've got to go down across the switch and there are a lot of wires on here, but this is what you need to make, to make it happen. We do it, uh, you know, every day here in assembly. So I promise you, you can do it. Uh, that's it. I've got them all. So I'm going to end it here on this negative. So now this switch has the crisscross reversing polarity jumpers on it. This one does not yet, but, um, they each have, a black and a blue for positive for a backlight circuit uh, wired into the nav light. Okay, so now let's add, let's add power to the navigation anchor light switch. So this is coming in from your circuit protection and your fuse, and this is the negative. And so now, when you turn on your nav lights, you get a nice illumination for nighttime readability on your trim tab switches. Now remember, we've got the lights working, but we still haven't hooked up the input or output to the nav light. Uh, I mean, the trim tab switch. So. Let's do that. So the, the terminals are down in here, just as before. We need a positive into one. It gets really tight, but you can do it. A negative into the, the other side on terminals two and five, same terminal numbers as, um, as the unlit switch. And then our output leads, which again, don't really matter. It's nice to have some needle nose pliers. So that is why people think it's a complicated switch. It really is, and these would have would look just the same beside it. It's really nice to do that, this out of the boat if possible, um, or just hire us to do it. Okay, we're gonna bring power into, oh, let me hook up the load first. Again, this goes into either terminal, and if it's wrong, just swap it the other way. So our orange wire and white wire are coming out of terminals uh, four uh, and and six, and then we'll bring power into the switch. Negative in, and you don't want to, do, I don't like to daisy chain this black for the backlights down to the black for the reversing polarity because this carries the load current of the pump. And if you start, and you do that, jump from the top, one of these down to this black, then you're carrying the, the entire load, I mean, five or 10 amps through your backlight circuit, which is, um, which can be problematic 
cause voltage drop, cause your lights to start fluttering when you hit your trim dives, that type of thing. Okay, and it works. Out, in. That's how to wire trim tabs, man.